What's up guys, good morning. My name is Bjorn. Um, I'm one of the swimmers on Kalman Swim and today I'm gonna give you some general tips on how to swim an 18 second 50 freestyle. Since Bjorn isn't gonna go brag about himself, I will for him. Bjorn is a 13-time NCAA All-American, nine-time Pac-12 champion, three-time NCAA champion, and one-time Olympic qualifier for his home country of Sweden. So Bjorn knows what he's talking about when it comes to 50 freestyle, sprint freestyle tips. You guys are not gonna to wanna to miss this one. So in addition to Bjorn being an incredibly fast freestyler, Bjorn also holds the NCAA record for the fastest 50 backstroke ever. He's like a missile in the water. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Bjorn today and he's gonna teach you how to swim an 18 second 50 freestyle. Bjorn, take it away. What are some drills that you like to do when you're warming up for a sprint freestyle like race? What are you thinking about? What drills are you working on? Yeah, so a couple of good things to think about when you do sprint free is do you wanna have good uh, feet and hand connection? A lot of coaches will talk about that it has to be like a, you know, one one stroke on one side has to be up, down, up on the opposite leg. That has to be a timing thing. I don't think that's that important. I think you should more focus on just warming those pieces up separately. So something you could do is like you kick on a board and then you only have one arm on the board and the other arm does drills to where you're, you're, you have to focus on your kick but you also have to focus on something else. That gets both sides kind of warmed up. I like, I like that, that one. Um, another one is you do a kick out from a wall at maybe 80% into first just kick with arms at 11 position and then you add in your arms later. So it's like a progression. It's, it's, it's underwater kick to flutter to arms. So it's not all at once. You break it down a little. So you said that one of the keys to success is resistance. We're going to go hit some power towers here quickly. Why do do you think resistance in the water is the key to swing fast and sprint freestyle? So I'd say that resistance, especially if you have a shoot on or a, you're on a power tower, you usually attach that with a belt on your core. So it locks in your core, it keeps it from moving sideways when you swim. And it gives me a good feel for not slipping in the water. So what a lot of people will do is when they pull and they move their arms quicker and quicker to the sprint, they will start pulling up here and then once they come down to the core, they'll do like an S motion in, like past their belly button and then out again. And the resistance kind of helps you avoid that because you want to pull on a straight line. So we do a lot of slow drills where you focus on reaching up far, you anchor in high elbow, and then you pull uh, either high elbow or straight arm. You can do both, it's mm -hmm. fine. But you want to keep that pull in a straight line. You don't want to S motion in too much. Let's go see what Bjorn's got to do on the resistance. Let's go hit the power towers. You mentioned earlier that you're focusing on your core. What are you thinking about on the power towers outside of just that strong core? Emphasize quality over quantity. So that means you want to be let, let just less strokes. You don't have to go as fast. You can do it kind of slow, but you really focus on what you're doing. So sometimes we do like we'll push off. We'll do just arms, just pull. Sometimes we'll do just kick. Like there's black lines across the bottom. So we'll do like three lines kick, three lines pull, it's very rarely just swimming. All right, so Bjorn, when we're talking about swimming fast in a 50 freestyle, there's lots of things that you can go break down. Give me a general overview of some tips that you like to think about when you're swimming fast freestyle. So the first tip I would say as a general tip that everyone should be uh, uh, nailing before they go into specific stuff for your stroke is um, you want to get your recovery down and that's uh, nutrition. You want to eat high quality macronutrients and you want to do that consistently throughout the day. You want to hydrate your body, which means what has worked for me because I'm out in the sun is you want to put salt in your water bottle and that's something that has worked for people across the board actually. So if you drink water, you want to drink a lot of water, but also add a little bit of like electrolytes plus salt. I think that helps me a lot. And then sleep is a big one. That's the last one of the big three. Eight hours, just get done, I'd say. I mean, we all study, we all have stuff to do. Um, but if you want to swim in a fast 53, you want to get that recovery and that's the first thing. So the big three then is what? It's sleep, hydration, and nutrition. So the second one in general tips is consistency. Um, we just talked about how you have to get the recovery down, but then when you're training, uh, and the recovery has to be super consistent across the board. You want to make sure that you go to training, have a scheduled laid out plan that gets you to a goal over time. If you do all these tips once, it's not going to get you anywhere. So we're looking, I mean, just to get in shape. If I'm off for three weeks, just to get back in shape, it takes me a good six, seven weeks. So I'd say that if you have a goal like this, you want to make sure you figure out a plan and you have a coach that can get you there over a specific amount of time, a couple months, I'd say, at least that. So let's get into a little bit more of speed specific tips. Talk to me about some things that you think about when you're specifically thinking out about speed. We went over the general freestyle tips and drills that we should be talking about. Think to me about what you're thinking about when you're on those blocks at NCAAs 
50 freestyle, what's going through your mind? I'd say that on the block, the first thing that I do, and this is a good tip that not a lot of people do, is you want to make sure you breathe in before you go down to take your marks. So a lot of swimmers, they will be on the block, the gun will shoot, and then you, you go, and then you breathe in while you're in the air. Uh, like once you go to take your streamline, right? So what that does is when, when you breathe in, in, in the air, it like opens up your belly and you will fly around and it's not very stable, right? And you don't get as much air in because you're doing other things. So what we kind of figured out, I mean, almost years ago now, it's like you want to go on the block, you wait until other people start going down into their position, you stand up straight, you go, you breathe in fully, get some air in there, it creates so natural get- body tension, and then you go down, and then you hold that breath throughout the whole start process. It's only another like five or 10 extra seconds, but it gives you that natural body kind of uh, structure. And, 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 and you can really focus on getting your streamline in. So you're the last guy to go down when yes. you say take your marks. Yeah. I, I see you do this a lot. Yeah. I'm always curious behind the, the reason why. That's, that's super yeah, interesting. Can, not only does that make you focus on the whole process of getting your arms together, it has that natural core tension, but because you push in extra air, you also lay higher in the water once you're swimming and you it's way easier because you have more air in general so you're not struggling to finish the 50 so it's a great specific tip the second tip i want to give you is once you go off the block you want to focus on entry over length of entry this is something caleb has talked about in his like race analysis is that you want to make sure that you enter in a in one hole and you don't splash so much. Talk to me about what you mean by like one hole. I know I know what you're talking about, but when you're saying you're entering into one hole, you want your arms to be entering and then your feet to be entering through that exact same little splash area that you had right there. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically minimized splash. So what we do a lot with swimmers here, what I do a lot, is you do a start jump, but you simplify it. You make it slow. You make them jump right beneath the block. So don't go out. You just go down, but you make people uh, figure out how to how to do that without splashing and then you slowly but surely increase the length of that jump so a start like the problem with starts is that a lot of people will do everything at once really fast slow it down separate it do some drills that really helps to create that um, that entry because if you go for length people will splash and it will create a lot of resistance mm-hmm. it will just be slower in general so you don't have to jump that far it's just you want to enter into into one hole and splash it least as possible and because you have that natural body tension for it because of the big breath you took it will be a lot easier to kind of find your line and then and then kick out the third specific tip for the race is in the 50 you don't breathe right but at the 100 200 400 and up when i breathe when i was younger i would always start comparing myself to everyone else where they were in the race that would always mess with me because i'd be ahead and i would be worried that people are going to catch up or you know if i start slow and try and catch up then they would be in front of me so that would freak me out too so a good tip that i have for a lot of swimmers is to really stay in your lane and focus on your race is when you breathe close your eyes and this might sound silly but uh, I, we do it with a lot of swimmers here I do it at NCAs with pretty much all my races I never know where anyone else is so I only see when my head is down and I'm at the black line to kind of stay straight in the lane right but when I when I breathe I'll close my eyes and then I'll breathe and I'll come back down and open them again and I'll do that in the turn too so I'll turn I'll close yeah. my eyes and then once I straighten out for the kick then I'll open my eyes again so I stay straight yeah. take that with a grain of salt a lot of people they get a lot of energy from 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 having that competition Mm. So like they want to see other people and if that is you then that is fine But if you have trouble with focusing on your race because you start looking where everyone else is I would say that is a great tip to, to focus on what you're doing closing your eyes while breathing I really like that and you have a really quick breath and that really must be attributed to why you're just getting right back to that black line So I sat down with Bjorn and he wanted to do a race breakdown video and kind of dissect what he was seeing in his swims He said he drew a lot of inspiration from Caleb Dressel when he was learning how to swim short course yards after making the transition from living in Sweden to America. In watching all those videos, he was able to get multiple data points that he was able to use and implement into his own swimming. So when I sat down with Bjorn, he said he wanted to give back to you guys and do the same thing. So I hope you enjoy Bjorn's breakdown of his 50 freestyle. There you are, again, exactly proving standing up high on the blocks, taking that last breath in. Yeah, so I'm not last down, but I'm one of the last ones down. I'm not the fastest off the blocks, but there's very little splash compared yep. to other people. And that's huge, right? So it's entry over length. I kind of kicked a 15. If that is your strength, do it. If you're not a good kicker, get up and swim. The highest speed you're gonna have is once you start and once you turn. So once you come off a block or off a wall, that's the highest speed you will have in the race period. So everything is 
a deacceleration from there onward. It's really figuring out how to, how to keep your speed from the start and, and just move that through the underwater. I would say if you have a GoPro, get underwater, film yourself. You can really see if your big kick, if your first kick is too big, it'll, it'll destroy your speed. What did you learn from Ryan Hoffer and his underwater abilities? Because I feel like your underwaters have transformed a lot since your freshman year. Yeah, it's a good question. So Ryan Hoffer is one of the swimmers who was a senior when I was a freshman. Greatest, greatest guy ever. Super, super awesome. But uh, he also has amazing underwaters. Yeah. Clearly you're taking note of that. I mean, you're, you're going underwater longer than anyone else. And you said that's not even one of your, one of your strengths. Per se. It is now, but it wasn't before. Um, yeah. um, I think a big thing to think about is that the kick starts from your chest down. Everyone says that, but that also means that you want to keep your upper body stable. So your arms are, you, you lock your head in and you move everything from the chest down. Um, you're going into the turn right here. You're not breathing. You hit the wall. You're not looking at anybody. What's going through your mind as you're coming home this final 25 here? Um, for me, the second 25 is all about keeping the stroke rate high and the length of the stroke long. So there's two there's two ways to accelerate your stroke rate when you're tired because once you get tired your stroke is going to decrease but what you don't want to happen is you don't want to decrease the length of the stroke. That's really important. So for me, a lot of practice has been putting socks on my hands and moving my arms as fast as I can and taking them off when I'm tired and then still having that same stroke rate because now I have less resistance. And when you're coming down to the finish right there, what are you thinking about? Is it getting your head in line so you have a good transition? Are you thinking about what the relay exchange looks like? In a 50 freestyle, what are you thinking as you hit that 37 and a half meter mark? Because you're not coming up until at least halfway yeah. right there. What are you thinking about? Head down or is it more about the acceleration? Yeah, usually the last 10 of a race, if it's a 50 or 100, usually the body will start to, it'll be tired. So you'll start to do like one, two kick rest, but it's like super micro rest, right? You'll mm -hmm. have like, your consistency starts to break up. So you yep. lose your rhythm. So for me, it's all about keeping that, that rhythm going and keeping the legs going, especially the last 10. A huge shout out to Bjorn, Dave Durden, and Cal Athletics for making this video happen. Bjorn wanted to let me know that while he was able to provide a bunch of amazing tips, Tips, there's still more that you can do with your 50 freestyle. If you guys want more swimming race analysis and swimming technique videos, make sure to go subscribe to my channel down below and like this video. That way, I know that you guys like this type of content. With that, that's gonna do with this video. Shout out to Bjorn for doing this one. Go Bears, and I'll see you guys next time.